Can I talk about? Am I allowed to talk about AEW Dynamite? It's on national television. Yes. Because you know, some people don't like that show. Oh yeah. Yeah, lots of people think it sucks. They think it's in the mud. Oh yeah. But I still talk about it. Uh-huh. I don't come on here and go, oh, you know, oh. Uh, you know, F four seven eighty two with an egg for his avatar. Doesn't want me to talk about AEW, so I'm not going to talk about it here. No, I talk about everything, and it's on national television. I'm talking about it. Alvar Lambez here, or whatever the hell it is, L- Lambert. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, let me guess. You guys didn't like Dan Lambert and uh, Brandy last night? <laughs> I think Even you, though the you crowd know, ate that segment up. Do you, they well, it's, ate it's it up. Springer. That, look, let's just start with that first, okay? That was very Jerry Springer-esque. It was a, that was yeah. a spectacle. That was do something. A, I'll bet you anything it does a huge quarter. I'll bet you anything. <laughs> I'm, you know, you're exactly right. It probably will. It is so ridiculous. I am not so invested emotionally into Brandy and Cody, and I see other people that just, these people get under their skin to an incredible degree, and for maybe for some good reason, maybe for some, obviously in many cases, ridiculous reasons. And I don't look at Brandy and think, I authentic wrestling character. I didn't say it was going to be the highest. Go ahead. But she, I mean, as far as segments that come feeling like they're right out of daytime TV, Brandy Rhodes every single time has given me that feeling. And there's a place for that in wrestling. And this feud is very mid-card. It really is. And I really like Ethan Page and Scorpio as a tag team. I really like Dan Lambert. But everything about this is just it's a mid-card fill. And if the mid-card fill is going to happen, I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be a great wrestling match, which... That's, you know, secondary here. But I want a good spectacle, and that's what this is. Brandy out there being completely ridiculous and looking like she just came off the Steve Wilco show is incredible. And Dan Lambert just being a prick. Again, I see why it's grating for some people, and I can see why the Dan Lambert aspect of it has jumped the shark and people were done with it after the inner circle. But it hasn't really happened with me. And in this mix with Cody, I think it's perfect because it's a bunch of really obnoxious people all in the ring with each other at the Dude, same time. The whole key and to I think this, it's great. The whole key to this is is the fans hated everybody. But because they hated everybody, <laughs> anybody could make a statement bearing the other person and it would get a pop. Yes. Dan Lambert comes out, he does his usual thing. He was booed out of the building. But then he starts running down Cody's tattoo. Now he's a baby face. They all start <laughs> cheering him because he's running down this tattoo. And then Brandy comes out. And at first, the, the, the fans see Brandy and they just hate her. And they start booing like crazy. But then she starts running down Lambert. And finally, she does her big fighting line, which, unlike Mike, I'm not going to say here on the show because I don't want Dom to yell at me afterwards. I'll but say the it. place just pops like crazy for that. And they're about to fight. And then this, you know, Dustin runs out to try to stop Dan Lambert and Brandy from fighting. And then this giant brawl breaks out. And all of this is leading to Cody versus um, Ethan Page on, uh, I think it's on, uh, I think they already taped it for Rampage. Rampage. Apparently it was great. But uh, that's leading to that match. And uh, you'll never guess uh, the Cody match on Friday apparently had tons of heat coming off this seriously heated angle right here. I just thought this was fantastic television. And then I, I hear everybody hated it. And it's like, are you guys pro wrestling fans? Or like, what are you? That was such a pro wrestling segment to its core. Oh, I hate that Dan Lee. Yeah, you're supposed to. Oh, I hate Bray. You're supposed to. You're supposed to hate them. That's the I'm, point. I'm not passing judgment, but with all due respect, I have. Uh, this is more entertaining to me to watch than frankly what the undisputed era is doing right now or what what they've been doing with best friends i mean to be honest with you and i know things are still kind of shaking out there but like as far as like my pro wrestling entertainment fix yeah there's always a place for something like this now where it leads to whether it's cody and scorpio sky in a match whether this ends everything here and i i don't know where it goes but as far as this aspect of it i mean i i don't see i just don't see how people don't look at this and even if they think it's trash not get a kick out of how ridiculous it is even if you're making fun of look at how these idiots on the screen i can't see how people aren't even making fun of that I just don't get it on this. Well, we got the same confusion here. Is Brandy supposed to be a babyface or a heel? 
Brandy is Cody's wife. We just yes. talked about this yesterday. Whatever you think about Cody, that's what you're supposed to think about Cody's wife. In they're married and they're together. So, like, if you're one of those people that goes, oh, man, Cody's supposed to be a heel. Well, then Brandy's supposed to be a heel. If you're one of those people that goes, oh, Cody's supposed to be, a, 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 like, a, a baby face, that, what, that's Brandy. So don't argue with me about whether she's a baby face or a heel. That's like arguing about whether what Cody is right now. I think... That they are both, they are both heels who believe they're baby faces. Not believe that the diabolical things that they do are right, but they believe that they're they're baby face good people. And some of the fans think they are baby face good people. They cheer them like crazy. They got tons of cheers on Friday at Rampage. But there's the other part of the crowd that they're like, I do not like this Cody. I hate this guy. I hate that he wears a, you know, red, white, and blue. Blah blah blah. Well, then you're welcome to cheer the guy. But it's the same thing with his wife. They're a yes. couple. They are delusional, but they're also egotistical. And they all, I, I, ever, I just, yes, I Yes, just like me. <laughs> just like you. Now you just all like understand. You. The color's much better today, by the way. The color's exactly the same as it was yesterday. We didn't change <laughs> one thing. But thank you for paying close attention. Now... We had a bunch of fun matches. Matt Hardy, Private Party, FTR versus Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Christian, and the uh, Lucha Brothers. Boom, 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 13 minutes. Christian got pinned after uh, he couldn't get along with the Lucha Brothers. This is leading to Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Lucha Brothers with Christian in the corner of Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Can we not all see where this is going? Christian... Christian is a is a bad guy who's going to do something that he thinks is right. And that is, after like a year, he's going to get revenge on this damn jungle boy for throwing him out of that battle royal. That's what we're leading to here, I think. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Daniel Garcia in 2.0 beat Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. When uh, Can I ask uh, you a question? Matt Lee on? got the pin. Homie. What? Is it time to find Luchasaurus a partner? Because now Christian's going to be out of the group. Jungle Boy probably is best suited continuing to work as a single and get better that way. And not to say that you have to jettison him from the team altogether. It still can be a three-man unit. But is it time to now get Luchasaurus somebody and just let Jungle Boy concentrate on a feud with Christian and continue his singles run? No, not yet. Okay. Besides, it's also not WWE where... You know, they think, ah, you know, we want to do something with one of these guys. We must break up this team. Whoa, time out. It's I didn't just... say break up the team. In fact, you're saying the same thing right now with Christian turning on him just because, I mean, yeah, there's that callback, but there's really no reason right now for Christian to turn on this team. He just broke out the Christmas shirt with all three of them oh, on Oh, brother, are you kidding me? This has been building for a year now. He's been plotting his revenge against the Jungle Boy for a year and he's done the promo. I'm going to make sure that they win the tag team titles. I'm going to make sure that they're the next champions. He's lying. He's a creepy little you know what. And he's going to he's going to screw the Jungle Boy and they're going to have a feud that Jungle Boy is ultimately going to win and get elevated over. Mark my words. Although I've been wrong many times. MJF promo, he wants Wardlow to win the TNT title and then gift it to him, which Wardlow's not down with, but apparently it's in Wardlow's contract. Because he didn't read his contract. He was so excited to go to AEW and even read it. There's a lot of idiots in AEW with contracts. I'm still trying to get over private party and anybody that signed to the Hardy family office. Well, you know, they're they're making money, I guess. Uh, we had the Dan Lambert deal that's talked about. Jade Cargill, Thunder Rosa. 11 minutes. I had an argument with one of my uh, buddies the other night. He was... He was uh, he was upset that I was that I thought the Tiffany Stratton thing was just a disaster. Which it's a good thing I review NXT so I can explain these stories and you guys understand it. Why do you think she was hot? Like no, what, why he goes, why would he He goes why? if 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 she can't be on TV then Jade shouldn't be on TV either. Oh, come on. And I was on. like, hold on a second, bro. Yeah. Listen, this match wasn't good, but Jade is miles beyond Tiffany Stratton. And then it was like, oh, you're saying she's... I didn't say she was great. I said she's miles beyond Stratton. She still has miles to go. And yeah. no, Jade Cargill shouldn't be out there going 11 minutes on national television. This was not good. And she shouldn't be going 11 minutes next week either with Ruby Soho in the final. It's like, if she's going to win 
It should be a dominant win over Ruby Soho, and she needs to defend that title in quick, dominant matches like she's Goldberg. Not ready to go a long time yet. And it's not like they stuck Stratton with EO right off the bat. I mean, they did that with Jade because they knew that they had to, and they've tried to do everything they could. And yes, at some point she was going to have to go longer. Last night was that night, and we had talked about it leading into this thing, how it was going to be, and it was shaky. But... They are all invested on this woman, and how they've gone about pushing Jade Cargill is exactly the way they should have pushed Stratton. You have, if you've seen Stratton in her gymnast gear and all that stuff, it's like you have a gymnast here. You could have went with her real name, developed her like this, and then it t- costs a lot of money to actually be an Olympian. You know, you need, you need a lot of money behind you. You could have just transferred over. You could have given people something to build on and then moved towards this character if you wanted to take her in the WWE way later on. How they're doing it, you expose somebody, she can't work, people have an opinion about her, they, people in the company, develop an opinion about somebody, say she gets to the main roster, they rush her up there, they have another opinion about her, oh, this didn't work. It's my, they couldn't figure out what to do with Tiffany Storm, or with Tony Storm, so now with Tiffany Stratton, it's like, it's amazing, whereas Jade Cargill, for everything being rushed on TV, being on there way too quick, to do something like that to somebody, how they're developing her, it's, it's, you know, completely the opposite way. Listen, this is this is becoming madness here on the chat and I'm sure elsewhere. Bros, Jade Cargill is way better than she was a year ago, okay? Is she great now? Is she good? She is not capable of having an 11-minute match on national television. With that good doesn't worker. mean she but can't hold, hold a secondary hold belt. Here's you know the thing. I mean? This should not be a comparison between Tiffany Stratton and Jade Cargill. They both have the same issue. And it's not just them. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Tiffany Stratton's had no matches. None. Okay? What? Now, you want you want praise for Tr- Tiffany Stratton? Well, first match I ever had, her match was better. That's, that's <laughs> what do you want? Okay? Unless you're Kurt Angle, Braun Breaker, Kenna Kabashi, I'm sure there are others, you do not walk in Jack and Briscoe. have an excellent first match. You don't. Okay? Now, Jade Cargill, all right? She's working a lot of dark and elevation. All right. How many? 30 matches a year. Let's say that she works dark elevation every single solitary week, which she doesn't. 50 matches a year. In two years, she's had 100 matches. Now, if you've never wrestled, I'm sure you think, oh, if you've had 100 matches, you're great. No. Uh, For most people, you have 100 matches and you still shouldn't be going 10 minutes on national television. I'm not bearing Tiffany Stratton. I'm not bearing Jade Cargill. I'm pointing out that neither of them, neither of them has the experience that someone who started working 30 years ago and they got tons and tons of experience before they ever showed up on national television has. And you know what? This is the way things are going to be from this point forward. If you listen to me when I talk about NXT 2.0, it ain't just Tiffany Stratton. There was like four matches on that NXT show with people that shouldn't be wrestling on national television yet. But they are because that's the way the business is nowadays. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Simp. Mm, that's what I'm doing. I got to refresh a lot in my life. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish versus Orange Cassie, Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta. They have acknowledged... Oh, here's an NXT 2.0 story. They've acknowledged the feud between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly on Dynamite. Because NXT developed Adam Cole for four years to send him to Dynamite. And then Kyle got beaten up by Von Wagner. He went to AEW. Now they're back as the Undisputed. But they are continuing the storyline that they've had heat. And so that was the story of the match here. And Kyle accidentally hit Cole. The Young Bucks helped the uh, uh, Cole, O'Reilly, and Fish win. And then the Bucks are trying to convince Cole, you don't need to be with this dork Kyle O'Reilly. Cool Kyle. You need to be with us. It's because of us that you win. You go in there with that guy, he hits you with a running kick, and you get knocked on your buttocks. So that's the big story that's going on right now. Who will Adam Cole choose? Will he choose the Bucks, or will he choose Red Dragon? Which will be a slow build storyline, by the way. And that was the main event of the Dynamite show. Because, in fact, I reviewed 
all of Dynamite here on this program. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts? Yeah, this match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Danhausen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.